Hello everybody, welcome to the Mothman Jones Movie Channel. I am your host once again, John Mafio, in podcast form, but not really, this is just a shortened podcast, and I'm here with my good friend, John Anderson. Hello guys, how is everybody doing? Alright, we are here to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, if you haven't seen my review and John's review of Guardians of the Galaxy, you can check them out on our respective channels, the links will be down below for John's channel. And uh, we're going to talk about some spoilers today, because... One, this movie's had some pretty crazy reception all over the frickin' place from a bunch of people that we respect and follow, and uh, it's also just a lot of stuff happened in it. So mm -hmm. we're gonna get into the nitty gritty, the meat and the bones of Guardians Volume Two. So let's start with Yondu dying. I guess just, we're gonna we're gonna just <laughs> jump into it. Yeah, I told you. Well, if you clicked on the video, I think you know you've seen the movie. But so yeah. if you if you're not if you haven't seen the movie yet, uh, leave, leave now because that's a that's a big point. But Yondu dies. Wow. That was, uh, I'll be honest. When it happened, I, I'm so used to Marvel being like, "Oh, fake out deaths." That I was like, oh, pff, "There's no way he's dead." And then you get the whole funeral scene. And I'm like, "Oh, no, he's actually dead." All right. They went, good, um, good for you. Have Marvel. you ever seen Wrath of Khan, the Star Trek movie? I haven't, but I'm familiar with it. Does it? It reminded me of that, where at the end when Spock died, they had this whole funeral, and like mm. there was like this whole big thing, yeah. they made a big deal out of it. But it was like the first scene in a Marvel movie where I actually kind of felt, even though I didn't care for the character in the first one that much, like I actually kind of like mm -hmm. felt the weight of the situation and the mm -hmm. moment with the characters there. Yeah, there's definitely a good uh, amount of tension and suspense that... Honestly, in that whole third act was kind of missing, mm -hmm. and that moment really hit home with the tension. Yeah. It was also interesting to end the movie with a shot of just Rocky Raccoon just looking somber. Did you know? Mm -hmm. It was just kind of him crying, and it just kind of... Because mm -hmm. he, he builds great chemistry with uh, Yondu in that one scene where they're just, like, butter heads. Mm -hmm. And though the context of the scene didn't really flow organically for me, I thought it was a very good scene. But as we'll get into, a lot of the scenes in the movies kind of felt like scenes and weren't exactly as fleshed together as I think they could have. Mm -hmm. I see where you're coming from, but in my opinion, the more I think about it, I'm seeing it again Monday just to make sure I feel the way I feel. But I really still enjoyed the way James Gunn put together this film, even though the beginning of the movie, basically nothing significant happens for the first act and a half or so. Mm -hmm. But I still really enjoyed where it went. Mm -hmm. uh, were you surprised how early Ego got introduced? Uh, no, because we saw that in the trailer, which, yeah. as the trend is, you know, a trailer, we're going to show everything in the trailer. I was like, oh, Kurt Russell is uh, Peter Quill's dad, which, I, which, as we know now, isn't really a spoiler. No. Because there's a lot more to that that's kind of, could be telegraphed fairly s easily when you yeah. learn the mythos of the character. But I think that wasn't really a spoiler, and... I think the biggest concern I had when seeing the trailers was it was very distinct to me that, like, oh, here's Gamora, Drax, and uh, Stor uh, Storlord. Here's <laughs> Storlord. Here's your supermarket today. Here, here's Drax, Gamora, and Starlord, and then Rocket, Yondu, and Group. They were very separate. Like, that mm -hmm. was apparent to me that the group is going to separate midway through the movie. And obviously, since it's such a character driven piece where we have Starlord meeting his dad. You needed the characters to have something else to do. So yeah. that's why you set on, on the separate mission. But the thing I loved about the first film, because first film is like my favorite MCU film, just under Winter Soldier. And I think the fact that they work so well together is them playing off each other. And the fact that they separated them kind of took it away a little bit. Again, I understand why they did it, but I think that's the charm, which the first half of the film had. That mm -hmm. Not a lot's going on, but you had that camaraderie of yeah. the team. That I really like. Yeah, I think James Gunn like focused on the right thing. He knows that we all enjoy all the characters there. So even though the plot isn't really progressing much, to see these characters have fun with each other and just basically, yeah, like ragtag with each other, it's in, it's a lot of fun. And it's entertaining. I but really then, like how um, the like the beginning of the first Guardians of the Galaxy, where you have Peter Quill dancing, running around, doing the whole thing to the music. Like mm -hmm. I remember seeing that the first time, being like, "Oh, this is great. This is very." Like creative and uh, very new. Yeah, it sets, like, a it sets a tone too for the movie as mm -hmm. well. And I was like, how are they going to top this? And they topped it. As I'm watching, I'm like, this is kind of the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, With Baby Groot dancing too. And that's a great song. That's a background. great song too to dance in the background. Mm -hmm. The ELO. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I 
I feel like, I don't know how, but I feel like Mar- Baby Groot sounds like a very obvious thing, but it's such a genius thing, too. Like, mm-hmm. every moment he's on screen, you can't help but, like, mm-hmm. be it's- engaged no matter what's going on. And, then like, he has some great scenes, too. Mm-hmm. He doesn't really add much to the story, but he's... Th- not he to just, the story. Not to no. the story at all, but he is, like, every moment he's on screen, yeah. he gives... Just he just makes you smile, makes you laugh. Yeah. Well, the and scene that's great. when they're in the prison with the Ravengers, what are they called? Ravengers, my guy. Yeah. There, right. Mm-hmm. And he, they're trying to get the uh, the fin for Yondu, mm-hmm. and it's like that scene goes on for like five minutes, like mm-hmm. five long minutes. But I, I still loved yeah. it. I didn't mind, and I like. There's, I think, what was the one joke in the beginning when Drax is talking about like literal shit and like pooping on Rocket because they're fighting. That went on a little bit long. Like I was like, oh, this this joke's still going on. This <laughs> seems a little. Low grade, James, mm-hmm. for uh, such a funny comedy, but that joke in particular, like you said, it does go on for a mm-hmm. long time. But I didn't mind it at all. I was like, "Yes, g- give me more. Keep, yeah, keep mixing it up." They like, got dark though, like the, the part where like he has the the, the thumb, and they're like, "Where'd you get a thumb? There's a severed thumb." Like the kids watch the movie are probably like, "What the heck?" I thought that is was that? really funny. <laughs> Speaking of dark scenes, though, when. Yandu or what's it? Teaser face. Taser, Taser face. face. Taser face. <laughs> uh, now I can't even say that name without laughing now. <laughs> but Taser face, when he kind of makes this mutiny against Yandu, and he sends all the people into space, the vacuum of space, and that's like a very dark scene. Oh, yeah, like I was you, like, you literally wow. Literally, the camera just pans, not pans, but the camera just like stays focused on a guy's face, literally suffocating for like mm-hmm. 10 and the guy seconds pleading there. to Yandu, and I'm just like, if I'm a child, I, I'm slight. Like, I feel like they wouldn't realize what happened, and then they reflect on it later when they're going to sleep, and they'll mm-hmm. be like, those people died. The very painful way <laughs> yeah it's horrible oh gosh but uh i don't i get i feel like james gunn just didn't feel like holding back but he mm-hmm. definitely it definitely did what he wanted to do with this mm-hmm. movie and it definitely feel it definitely felt like marvel didn't hold him back yeah which was refreshing to see well he's a very trustworthy director and i think he know he knows he gets what they want but he also i guess he doesn't have too much like I, like an Edgar Wright, maybe where I feel like maybe that he I love Edgar Wright style, but I understand where it would come from, where mm-hmm. maybe it was too much for them. Yeah. But James Gunn could blend like the mainstream what they want, and also he could throw in crazy weird shit that people would never expect from a movie like this. Like I remember watching Ant Man and that Falcon scene. I remember watching that and being like, "Oh, that's why Edgar Wright like Edgar Wright yeah. left," because that does feel like, "Oh, this is." Mm-hmm. Fan service, this is the span of the universe. Yeah. That was definitely where he drew the line there. But it's crazy. Is this like I didn't feel like there was much fan service in this movie. That besides maybe well, a mention that, or two that of one Thanos. one of the one of the five. Oh yeah, one five. of the five end credit scenes that I was five? just five like, five. Like okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> but you have the uh, the new guardians, or from what I've heard online, it's the the old or the original guardians because which. I, I, I didn't know who that was either. Mm-hmm. I, so I'm, I'm like, oh, Ving Rhames is in this movie? Yeah, from I know, Fiction? right? Like, okay. I was like, look at look at this shot. <laughs> this is supposed to make me like feel tingly inside, and it doesn't, because I don't know who these people are. No. Except I was... I remember they cast uh, Sylvester Stallone, but I completely forgot he was in this movie. So when he showed up, like that was like a genuine surprise by me. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. oh yeah, he is in this movie. So that I, I was glad that they kept him out of the marketing, because mm-hmm. that was a good pleasant surprise yeah. that I really enjoyed. Yeah, he only was in two scenes. The beginning, yeah. the first, the first big scene with Yondu, and then the end when they're at his funeral. Mm-hmm. But he does add you. It adds more expansion mm-hmm. to the universe of Marvel, and you can definitely tell they're gonna bring him back for the third one because mm-hmm. James Gunn had already confirmed he's writing a third one. So mm-hmm. if they're gonna bring the original Guardians in for some reason yeah. in the story, I could see. I feel like that'll doing. get like really bloated because you have you already have a team of like eight Guardians, and mm-hmm. now you have another team of five. There's which. One of the biggest struggles that this volume two struggles with is that they have all these characters, and he again Gunn's trying to give them all stuff to do, and again that kind of slows down the pace a little bit because you have every character has to have something to do, or else you get people saying, "Oh, well, this person had nothing to do." Mm-hmm. So I think adding so many characters that's just going to be overwhelming in volume yeah. three. But if anybody can handle it, I think James Gunn can because yeah. again. That's more of a slight criticism. It's not. And I'm, I'm not saying that I hated that there were so many characters yeah. and that there's not all of the plot lines really come together as well as I think he thought they did. But 
I just think it makes me a little nervous going into that. Uh, I guess if I had one thing to say about that, like we're predicting Volume Three stuff now, but I think if they're gonna, if he's really gonna keep going with that, we, we have no idea what he's gonna do. Yeah. No but idea. if they, if he does bring the original Guardians back, I think it'll be for like a slight thing, yeah. kind of like John C. Riley in the first one, where he like he's there, like he has, he obviously has purpose in that moment, but he's not gonna be a significant character. Mm-hmm. It's just it's there for fun and it's there to maybe add some plot progression. Mm-hmm. Maybe they team up to like take down that Adam Warlock guy if they're mm-hmm. if that's if he's gonna be a villain or something. Which, if I'm honest, I don't know a thing about Adam Warlock. Me but either. that that got me excited. I was like, oh, because that's like that's been whispers of like where Guardians is gonna go. Like I feel like he's kind of like the Thanos of the Guardians of the Galaxy universe. Mm-hmm. That they're kind of been subtly building him up, and that gets me excited that we're finally getting. Yeah, him. and so. it's cool though that James Gunn has apparently he has like a vision for these characters for three movies. So. He definitely has a clear vision of where he wants to go. So, and also, I, I the only thing I know about Adam Warlock is that apparently, from what I read, that he's he's an antagonist, but then he kind of flips. Mm-hmm. Like, he's like swayed, or he, he's persuaded to like go the other way. He's, he's like Yondu for good. in the first movie, kinda. kinda like, yeah, so I don't know if they're gonna do that in this movie, say it, stay with that, or they're gonna make it, the adaption different, where like maybe he stays bad the whole time. Well, I guess we can get into the. The thing that's probably been the most ragged on this movie, which is the Sovereign and the Great People. I don't understand it. I, I personally think, yeah, they're annoying, but they're purposely annoying. Mm-hmm. They're there to like cause a problem for the Guardians the entire movie. Mm-hmm. And they do show up conveniently when they have to cause issues. But um, I, they're cr- like um, from a creative standpoint, I like how they are presented. I like how all the, like they're so advanced in their race that they don't actually have to be in their pods. They just play like, it's like playing Space Invaders. Mm-hmm. And like, they, I don't know. I, I personally enjoyed what, what what they were doing with that. No, I agree I agree with that. I don't see the heat. Like, they definitely aren't not the, the most... Hate. Yeah, yeah it's... Like, the, they're not the most interesting characters, but I think for what they're in the movie to do is to be that, like you said, that nagging side character that never goes away. I think they did that very effectively. Mm-hmm. There was one that one scene that we talked about earlier with Sly and... um. Yondu, where they meet in that, what would you call that, like a brothel, I guess, that yeah, James, like Gunn a brothel. Put, James Gunn put a brothel in a Disney movie. Yeah. <laughs> just gonna put that there. And, it's weird. and they also, they look very unsatisfied. Oh, they really do. There, there, were, there were people behind us sitting in the theater, <laughs> and then when, when the camera, like, slow focuses on Yondu, just, like, half-dressed, mm-hmm. and you get the three prostitutes in the background, <laughs> and some guy just goes, they look very unsatisfied. <laughs> he was just, like, so deterred. He was just, like, so ashamed of himself. He's like, I just did a robot. <laughs> I'm not proud of it. <laughs> but I did it. You know, guy, guys gotta get their pleasure somewhere. But, um... What's her name? What's the actress's name that played uh, the head of the Sovereign? I, I, I'm Elizabeth I'm a, Debicki. There yeah. it is. And um, I'm afraid there to was, like botch her name. So you guys, there you go. It. Got it. So she's um, she shows up to the brothel and like I felt like that bit kind of went on too long. Where she's walking down the thing and it's like funny and mm-hmm. then it goes on. That was like one joke in particular that I was like, this, again, uh, this, I was like, this is funny, but this could have ended. Yeah, a while ago. Yeah, we probably didn't need a joke it, like that. They could exactly. have showed up, but it, it, it could have slowed down the runtime because I think that the film as a whole is like fifteen minutes too long. Mm-hmm. And they found like I I don't know what scenes you would cut, but if you trim down certain scenes, I think it'd be more tangible. Because mm-hmm. like I said, I just feel like it goes all over the place for a lot of the time, and it misses that cohesiveness that the first film had. Yeah, well, yeah, the first movie definitely felt more of, like, a complete film. Like, from beginning to end, you could totally tell there was, like, a three-act structure there. Mm-hmm. Where, like, in this one, yeah, it does slow down in the middle. Even though I did, to be honest, I guess the second act was mostly about the split. But, like, all the aspects of moving into... I have no... I'm not good with segues here. But Ego... <laughs> What's e- a segue? <laughs> Isn't that a thing you ride? Like, a scooter? Yeah, like, uh, Paul Blart Mall Cop had oh, one God. in that fantastic That's, classic uh... film. But yeah. the, the less we talk about that film, the yeah, I don't know where. Uh, I talked about a segue. And We're then, making the segue super awkward. But yeah, I don't it's think fine. Kurt Russell's never wrote a segue. Uh, Kurt, Russell. Kurt Russell, he's a bad guy. Snake Plissken, ego, the living planet. Oh, <laughs> so Kurt Russell's in this movie, and he plays catch with Chris Pratt. Oh, I actually really like that. I like that scene too. Yeah, I thought that was. I was like. 
if there's one thing he does and that I like just in general with films is when you plant a seed early on, like in Captain America, I could do this all day, and you, you call back to that, I think that's, I'm like, ah, oh, good storytelling right there. Mm-hmm. So I like that. He's like, oh, I want is like to, to play catch with my dad, because I kind of can relate to that, too. Mm-hmm. Like, every, every kid wants to play catch. Like, that's just a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. If you're not thing. into sports, like, you get that. And I think that was a good little thing to, yeah. like, be like, oh, they're bonding. And he's getting that closure or exposure, rather, at that yeah. point that he's been searching for. Mm-hmm. Did you, I mean, did you like the aspect of that where, like, he's just talking about, oh, this is how I met your mom, and this is, I planted seeds in all the planets here, and did you, it like... Was, it was a little exposition-y. It reminds me a lot of, uh, like, Jor-El from Man of Steel, where he's like, this is the the history of Krypton, and mm-hmm. here's my slideshow that you yeah. can look at. I thought I was like, this is kind of much, but again, it was essential. We needed, I, yeah. we needed to know that. I, I like, I understand, like, from a critical standpoint, like, from a f- critical point of view, I'm like, yeah, this is kind of lazily put together in this, in that regard, but I still bought into it in the context of the movie. Like, I get, yeah, this is, this is the first time uh, Ego has seen his son mm-hmm. ever, so, like, he just kind of has to do it in some way, somehow. I like that he was a celestial. That was a good nod. Mm-hmm. Another comic book thing that was like, oh! Celestials. Yeah, I, Those knew, are I, big, I knew I recognized that God-like word. like things that make sense. Yeah. And um, I really liked how, well, it kind of subtly, like, builds, and then he drops the bombshell on him that, you know, he kills, uh, he's like, yeah, I killed your mother, basically. They, I didn't, I love that moment, and I love how Chris Pratt immediately was like, like, because he's so close to his mother, and he, like, mm-hmm. has such strong feelings. Rage mode. Like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Just, like, shoots the shit out of Kurt Russell. Mm-hmm. But I didn't like how, like, literally a beat, uh, like, a story moment beat after that, he turns into David Hasselhoff. Yeah. Like, it just totally took all the emotion away from me in that moment. I'm like, oh, joke. Uh, it's kind of yeah. like in Iron Man 3 when Pepper Potts supposedly dies. <sighs> And then there's a joke I was, right I was that. so devastated when that happened. She, like, she was such an interesting character. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but do you remember that, though? Like, right after that, there's yeah. a part where, like, he's about to get the suit, and then this kind of is a joke. Again, like, back, back when I thought people could die in the MCU, I was like, oh, wow, she's dead, but I don't feel it. And then she came back, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that's a... Uh, they that's, might as well funny. have killed her after what happened in Civil War. Like, mm-hmm. she doesn't, she's not around anymore. No. But, but uh, I, don't know. I don't think that bothered me that much. I think uh, the uh, nostalgia critic said it best, but he was like, if they waited 10 more seconds, I think it would have hit better. Oh, they mentioned that moment in... Yeah, he did a, a sibling rivalry. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And they he brought that up, and I was like, yeah, I guess that's right, that's true. But I don't think, I didn't bother me that much, but I could see how that would bother somebody, because again, mm-hmm. that was a very, it's a very tense like, moment. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, like you said, it's like a bombshell for Chris Pratt to mm-hmm. hear something like that, like, oh, mm-hmm. who somebody I thought I could trust... Mm-hmm. Killed my mother, like, it's a big deal. Um, and then he goes away for a little bit, even though he's the planet, which kind of was a little odd to me. That for a good, like, ten minutes, they're like, oh, we gotta stop Ego. And at this time, I'm like, you're you're basically walking on him. Mm-hmm. He's not aware that you're scheming Are you talking this? about when they're going to the core to, like, yeah, blow him up? Yeah, like, I'm like, I was kind of like, when's he gonna show up? I felt like... Well, again, there's only so much you can do with that regard, but mm-hmm. it felt like he's like, like, oh, I'm going to strike when the iron's hot and yeah. when they're really going to be messed well, what, up. But what I never really what felt happened? How did he go? I, I forgot how he went away. Or I, don't know. I, f- I feel like he shot him a bunch of times. I, I forget. I don't so, know. I think Mantis Some, didn't, didn't Mantis, Mantis do, something? do something. Well, she Mantis like kept him That's at bay the, yeah. for a little bit. And then that's how stuff was going on. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't happen to like midway when they're already in the core. Yeah. Like, that whole that whole sequence is kind of it's it's a little sloppy, but mm-hmm. that joke with the the bomb and Groot, I think that still works and oh, probably yeah. better than in uh, the trailer because oh, it's yeah. funny in the trailer. But in, in context, the context, it's great. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, did you um, did you like? I like the f- first movie didn't do this, but I liked in the second movie they used a song twice, the uh, Fleetwood Mac song, mm-hmm. uh, the chain. The part where uh, Chris Pratt's basically just realizing that he could use these celestial powers to, like, mm-hmm. fight his father. And, like, mm-hmm. the, the beat just kicks in and, like, goes in sync. When, remember that? When he mm-hmm. just, like, starts, like, going ape shit. Yeah, it, it turns into Zod versus Superman. Yeah, and he turns into Pac-Man for a second. <laughs> that was weird. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. That was weird. I was like, I like that joke. What? <laughs> I, 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 I get it. It's, like, a very, like, emotional time he's fighting his father. But I still, like, kind of, like, in context, like that joke. Yeah. I don't know. That, was, I, the, I that see... was the one joke that I was like, uh, I, 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 that was no, I too goofy. I, I thought it was a little yeah. too goofy. 
But literally the opposite of the Hasselhoff. Like, you thought the Hasselhoff thing was a little too weird. Mm-hmm. I thought the Pac-Man thing was a little too weird. But yeah. teacher zone. I guess this is, like, a matter of, sub- of subjectivity here. Some people are going to, like, fly with some jokes. Some people won't. <laughs> Like a lot, of, it's all about if you enjoy these characters. But mm-hmm. yeah, I can see where a lot of these jokes hit for some people and don't for others. It depends on where you're coming from personally. Speaking of jokes, Drax the Destroyer, more like uh, Drax the stand-up comedian. Am I right? Huh? Huh? You're beautiful. All right, I'm gonna on the inside. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna dismiss myself now. So, <laughs> I I was one of those people that wasn't crazy about Drax in the first movie. Like I thought he had his moments, but like overall, like I wasn't that invested in him this movie i think he's the funniest character hands down mm-hmm. like, yeah i loved him in that sense and Look granted again. there's not that much for him to do but that didn't bother me because i felt like he was the main comedic relief mm-hmm. and i was like that's that's his job and it's not really bothering me if oh yeah just do anything else there was not one moment where i didn't like him in this movie every joke mm-hmm. he had was pretty much a hit mm-hmm. for me too would you uh, say it was a punch I would say he's a punch. <laughs> and if you, you can't see it, but I actually did punch when I said punch. punch. Oh, punch. Because he's a destroyer. I wonder if he likes fruit punch, too. Maybe. Or maybe, I don't know if his wife and kid like fruit punch. Uh, I don't know if they had fruit no, punch on his planet. Speaking of wife and kids. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> we had... You had Nebula, who Karen Gillian's hamming it up the whole time, which I thought I was still, a little much. I didn't notice it it didn't bother nah. me but i could see where i can see where you're coming from is she does like this overbearing voice thing and she grinds so her teeth angry like, all the time i'm dr- i'm literally drax she like became drax and was super angry she was like one note mm-hmm. but the whole time she has this thing about thanos which i thought was good i was like oh you want to get revenge on thanos you know who else want to get revenge on thanos drax mm-hmm. like i felt like that like, if there was one way for them to connect, because the whole time he's cracking wise at her, basically, like, oh, you're not really part of this family kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I was like, I feel like that's a perfect thing that they were bond over, because that's something that, like, Drax does bring attention to it when he's talking to Manus, which, again, very good scene, kind of came out of nowhere. But, like, when she breaks down feeling his emotions, I thought that was very good. Mm-hmm. But I felt like they should have connected more. But Now that you mentioned that, I do kind of see that as kind of a missed opportunity mm-hmm. but i guess in the context of the story i guess yeah i'm trying to think of a moment where they could have thrown it in there but they were never really alone together mm-hmm. for that to happen yeah that's maybe true. maybe it's something they're saving for infinity war because they're all going to be there and yeah so maybe they're going to have a moment that way because mm-hmm. i always felt like because if there was one factor in the original movie that was to his character was like oh i want to kill thanos that's that was his thing or oh, yeah. oh, and it was rodent and his last line is him talking about thanos too isn't it like, yeah exactly no, i was like he, oh he, this is where his character's going and it yeah it doesn't really go there he's like ronin wasn't the real threat it's thanos yeah exactly thanos. i was like cool and then you could have built on that more which i would have liked to see mm-hmm. but again in the context of the story it doesn't really yeah. work and instead we get a retread of the gamora nebula relationship that we saw yeah. in the first movie but i like it more in this one yeah it definitely Again, After, it's a little jarring. It's like, I feel like we're doing this again, but it, it's yeah. done more effectively. I didn't care for it until after Karen Gillan gave her whole speech about getting her arms and mm-hmm. eyes and head ripped piece by piece every time Gamora like, won in a battle. I thought it was, the... it was kind of funny that she just showed up out of nowhere, because I was expecting like it to be like Rocket and Yondu, and it's like, oh, here's Karen Gillan, could shoot shit up. And I was like, <laughs> that, was, that was kind of funny. But like, it wasn't laugh out loud funny, it was kind of like... Oh, look at this. And then you have that whole sequence there, which I thought, you know, again, a little tedious, but what this film struggles with is finding places for action, since it's such a character-driven story, Mm -hmm. is that, and I think that's really ultimately why he separated them, because he's like, we need places to put action, because for the whole longest time, we think Ego's a good guy, and it's all about getting to know him, and there's not much Mm -hmm. excitement going there. So you separate the characters, but... I don't know. I think, uh, also, I don't know, I read an interview a little while ago where James Gunn compared that when he was writing the script for this movie, he called back a lot to Empire Strikes Back, and in that movie, the character, the main character, I don't know if you remember, like, Luke's with Yoda, oh, yeah, Han, yeah, Chewie, Han Chewie mm-hmm. are, like, doing their own thing, and then they all converge at the end of the movie. That's so true. I think that's kind of, I don't know if he was doing it the whole time, or maybe you're right, maybe there was some times where he was trying to, he maybe wrote himself into a hole where he was trying to find ways to make things happen organically mm-hmm. but yeah I could see, there's a lot of callbacks to certain movies i think in this and uh i could see again i don't know it's a this is one of those tough divisive movies where i feel like 
time is going to like show whether people still feel one way about it or another. But it, it takes a lot of risks where I think it could really stand out in mm-hmm. five, ten years or so. When you look at all of the other like MCU films, like yeah, like uh, Doctor Strange, Ant Man, like those are all good or fine. And they are slightly different. Mm-hmm. But what I really like about Guardians is that I feel like there's, like, rewatchability in it. Like, it's going to be this year's Deadpool, in a sense, that, like, you go back for the jokes. Mm-hmm. And though the story's much better than Deadpool, I think that's the big hook, is that kind of like how Lego Batman kind of spits so many jokes at you, and you're like, I can't comprehend all these jokes that are being thrown at me. I have to rewatch this now to kind of grasp them. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a big factor in this, but I think it's slightly better in the fact that, again, there's all these plot elements, and I think that... I think it might mesh better on second viewing, but again, mm-hmm. we haven't se- we've only seen it one time. Yeah. So. I definitely feel like this movie needs more than one viewing to really grasp a full opinion on it, because mm-hmm. there, there is so much thrown at you from a, like a character standpoint. Um, but I'm, I'm going to see it in like a big screen and make sure... like. I gotta see it one more. This is I, this is the first time in a long time where with a Marvel movie I've been like I need to see that again. Mm-hmm. Where I'm normally like, like with Doctor Strange I was content. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Ant Man I was content. Even with Civil War I was kind of content, even mm-hmm. though I loved it. Uh, with this movie I feel like I want to definitely like I'm like eager to see it again. But that's just me personally. Would you like to uh, feed your ego and uh, establish how you know good this movie is? Ha ha ha. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get attacked. In the also, I I didn't expect them. <laughs> I wasn't expecting ego to have like a face on the planet, but I was like kind of like I was like oh that's kind of weird. I, that's yeah. cool. No, like, I, 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 th- I like that. I thought that was because that's all the comic images. It was always a, literally a planet with a face, and I was like no no that's not gonna work. And mm-hmm. they did it, and I thought it, I thought I was like ah oh, that was a good nod. I liked that. <laughs> Again, most of the things I like. A few things not so much, but like you know. Again, it's better when a film is majority better yeah. than... Um, I, I'm trying to think of a recent film that I was just like, no, no, I'm sorry. Just in, a lot of... I don't know. <sighs> April was a bad bad month for movies. So. The Fast and Furious was a I, little bit of a tipping of the other side of the fence for that franchise, I think. Yeah, like, I felt, felt like it was like... Like, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah. Those, I'm like, this is fine. If, the, if there's two movies coming out this year that are like primarily theme focused on family, this is the better family movie oh, than that. Yes. That's just, I don't know what the hell Fast and Furious is categorized as now. <sighs> but this know. was actually, no matter what, I think no matter what side of the fence you're on for this movie, I think you could definitely say objectively that the heart was in the right place. Mm-hmm. I feel like no matter, like, you could tell they were trying. Mm-hmm. They were doing things that were like different. They were, they put themselves out there in a lot of ways. I don't know, would you agree with that? Or? Yeah, I think so, too. I think that, like, this is the best Guardian sequel we could have gotten. Because, again, it's so hard to compare it. It's, it's almost at a disadvantage at how surprising the first one was. Yeah. That to get that same reaction, it's impossible. Mm-hmm. You can't create the element of surprise that that film gave people. I remember going out of the first one and just being baffled. Like, I was so... I was like, that was really, like, that was really good. Mm-hmm. I feel, because at that time, I was like, oh, every Marvel movie is the same. And I was like, I was so taken back that I was like, no, that there, there's something to this Guardians thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that this film continues what that film established. But again, to get that lighting in a bottle, it just wasn't going to happen. So yeah. I think this is the best thing. Again, you could have a more focused story, which is one of the elements I liked about the first one that was very concise in that regard but Mm -hmm. in this one again it's a little all over the place things don't really mesh as well but overall i think it's still effective sequel yeah and they really they build upon a lot of things that could make a third movie like the final entry of this character's story like really really compelling if it's told in the right way i think personally but if you're talking about marvel studio sequels i think this is just behind Mm -hmm. winter soldier like i feel like for Captain America, that was a fine movie, but there was there was a lot of way to go up there mm-hmm. for Winter Soldier. For Thor, it was a fine movie, so even though people don't like Dark World, they could have improved on that one a lot. Mm-hmm. Iron Man, I guess you could say people loved that movie, so it was kind of... Mm-hmm. I remember being vastly disappointed. I remember going into Iron Man 2 so hyped, and then I was like, yeah, oh wow, <laughs> what, what did I just watch? It was in Avengers... Great. Tie-in. It's a prequel. It but looks, I, I still so like it. Much. I enjoy it for what it is, but there's certain uh, things I have to that rewatch it to see. 
But that, that the thing I definitely say about this movie though is that it's a lot of fun and it's if you're gonna watch a Marvel Studios sequel, I think this is probably even Winter Soldier is a good, like, a great movie, but it, I think this might be more rewatchable mm-hmm. than a Winter Soldier oh. because of Winter the Soldier was a, elements. Winter Soldier was another movie that totally took me off guard. That I was just like, wow. This is really good. 2014 was a great year mm-hmm. for Marvel, Marvel movies. Yeah, that really put it, put all those uh, DC. Well, not it didn't, but it put the DC fanboys kind of like, hey, it's a, this is good because again, I had a lot of friends that were DC fanboys and were, Marvel sucks and blah, blah, blah. and that was the year that you're like, listen, it's not that but, bad. Now, well, Avengers was out by that point. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we I could, and Ave- I could talk Avengers. about Avengers for an hour. But oh yeah, yeah. I have Avengers. Avengers is not a perfect movie. Uh, don't hate me in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a perfect movie. But again, like I think that, again, that movie was like hearts in the right place. Mm-hmm. They had to do something. They did it, mm-hmm. and it totally I think deserved the success that it got. But yeah, this is I don't know. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. I think time is going to really play a role in how this movie is regarded in mm-hmm. a few years. Like a lot of you could. I don't know. Sometimes with these sequels, you can't really tell. I feel like if it's like there's a hype train going on, or people are really going to say a certain way. Mm-hmm. But I personally feel like people are going to come around on this movie. Mm-hmm. People who weren't like, I guess you're not on that train. No, I'm, I wouldn't but, say that. I, I dislike this movie. I think it's a no. really good movie, but I think I think the issues that people are seeing is going to bother them less the more they watch it. Yeah, I felt the same way about Deadpool because when we went into Deadpool. I, oh, it was the greatest comic book movie in the world. And I remember turning to, it was either you or Greg, and I went, this movie's not the greatest thing in the world. I'm going to be, like, disappointed. And it wasn't, in my opinion. And I remember, like, having a very mixed review about it and being like, no, it's good, but it's not great. Mm-hmm. And then I re- I've i rewatched it so many times since, and it's grown on me because, again, that movie's not really about the story. It's just about the character and the yeah. comedy, and that's why it excels, and that's why it's such a great movie the plot is a backdrop for all the jokes and the mm-hmm. humor that come with it exactly and i feel like guardians have fallen in a similar camp mm-hmm. not exactly the same again because again there are great story elements heel hero on the heel like achilles heel no <laughs> there are great elements here but they're not executed to their true capacity but again i think it's a great movie and it's a great summer movie especially yeah. to kick off the season officially mm-hmm. even though march is technically the start but technically not really because yeah. being the beast was a thing and then fast and the furious i don't know it's just I, I still have a thing with like it's it's about like it's may the weather just mm-hmm. like getting better and it's, but yeah i can see like where it's coming it is kind of moving earlier now but um i think it I'm moving back to superhero plotting, I think it does say a lot that this so we get like six, seven, eight, nine superhero movies a year now, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But when it, when a movie like this could stand out, even in some way, shape, or form, not entirely, I think it still says a lot about the movie that it could do that mm-hmm. in a time where we get so many freaking superhero movies. Like it could get tiresome. Yeah, but. definitely. There was definitely a point that if well, we're we're getting close to that oversaturation mark. Yeah, but I think again, I think, if they keep producing quality films. It won't feel that way, mm-hmm. so. Because after this, we have literally right around the corner is Wonder Woman, Wonder then Woman, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, then Thor. No, Thor. Thor is like November, but I think that's like the next one. I, I yeah, know. I don't know what else is coming out in between that and What's Justice July? League. Oh, Justice League. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of movies. Yeah. And hopefully they'll be good, Wonder Woman. Hopefully. 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 Yeah, I know. This is, this is, this is for Guardians of the Galaxy, but I swear to God... I'm telling you right now, if Wonder Woman is not, if I come out of the theater disappointed and seeing like feeling like the same way I did for the other movies, I'm gonna, I'm done. Okay. I, I'm just gonna, clock, I'm already kind of clocked out of yeah. DC movies right now, but I'm really Suicide Squad I'm, put just just stab me ever so slightly in the heart, and <laughs> it's I'm, still healing. <laughs> pe- uh, people get mad, but like it's not like I want. We don't want to hate these movies. It's just. Mm-hmm. They disappointed too many times to the point where it's hard to be excited or want to see these movies when they're not making the right choices. And but I think one final like Thor on just the Guardians franchise as a whole. I know they're building to like team up in Infinity Wars. I kind of wanted to see how that's wor- gonna work because I feel like it's it's definitely like it's like the P- people people have um what's the word I'm looking for. When preconceived notions something like that where the people are a little apprehensive 
because now I feel like the tone is different for Infinity War than a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. So to put these characters that are like fun and campy in like a darker tone, if it's going to be a darker tone, can't really tell yet. Mm -hmm. But the Russo brothers have done a good job of grounding these mm -hmm. characters. So to kind of ground the Guardians, I'm yeah, I think curious so. to see how they're going to. I don't know. I'm a little nervous, but now we know. Now we, I have a pretty sure idea that you know Thanos is going to kill Nebula and it's going to stir up Gamora and that Gamora is going to fight Thanos. Like they are planting the seeds, but I feel like it's still very alien to me how they're going to get to Earth. Like I feel like I needed like a line that like Peter Quill is going to go back to Earth because he can now or something. I don't know. I I want more ties to Earth, even though I I love how it's very independent. Mm -hmm. I, like, one of the five credit, end credit scenes could have been something about going back to Earth. Yeah. And instead, we get Drax getting stabbed by a arrow. Yeah. And Teenage Groot, which was, like, the best thing Yeah, ever. I love that. I am Groot. <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder if... Yeah, well, apparently, there's a lot of time in between these movies and Infinity War, so he's, mm -hmm. gonna, he's not going to be a teenager when Infinity oh, War yeah. happens. It's He'll a, be a full-age <clears throat> Groot again. Of course. Or maybe even older. Who knows? Because apparently Vin Diesel said, can't take too much credence to what he says, because mm. Vin Diesel says a lot of things. Yeah, he but he says that Groot isn't in his final form in the first movie. So if he's just like like a, like a kid our age, or like in his early 20s in that movie, what's he going to look like in Infinity War if he It'll actually grows bigger? <laughs> I'm an ent. <laughs> <laughs> He'd literally be a wise ent. But he's a Groot, so all he say is, I'm Groot. I am Groot. I like how people understand him, though. <laughs> Like, uh, it's so so charming that, like, he'll say things, and then, like, Rocky will reiterate what he just said. It's like and a Han think, and Chewie thing, yeah. where Han understands what he's saying, <laughs> even though all you hear from him is, Arr! It's very charming. <laughs> like this movie. It was charming. It was good. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it yet, we're sorry, we just destroyed it for you, but uh, go on and see it. I don't it. know why you're watching. I don't, I don't know why you're listening to this, if we, you haven't. We gave you a fair warning. We gave you, like, the biggest... Although, Tug on the heart maybe, right I, maybe the I shouldn't have talked about Yondu dying five minutes into the podcast, but that's that's on me. You was click on a spoiler video, all right? Well, no, it's on you. It's on, it's on you. Was Mary Poppins cool? Hey, y'all. I'm Mary <laughs> Poppins. Yes. <laughs> oh, Disney. Take it over the world. He one may have step been your time. father, but he wasn't your daddy. <laughs> Yondu had some really good quotes in this movie, uh, too. I'll give, I'll give them that. Like the, His writing was really strong. I enjoy Michael Rooker. He's very entertaining. Yeah. I'm glad. Like I'm glad he's such a great actor. So I'm glad James Gunn gave him a meaty role before they took him out. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess yeah, we're getting towards the end of it here. So if we have any closing thoughts, if even if spoiler or non spoiler, what would you say for Guardians? It's a great time. Go see it if you like the first film. You'll love this film. And I guess if I was gonna rate it, I'd probably give it a solid eight out of ten. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty good though. It's mm -hmm. it's not. Big. Oh yeah, it's, you, again, it's you a can't great... see it, but like he's like you're like kind of like this a little I, bit. But uh, I feel like that's a really good rating for I a think, movie. I think so. If you yeah. gave it like a six or like no. a five, I'd be like, oh, because yeah, again, it's kind of it has its issues, but you're able to look past them, which I think is the merits of a good movie. Mm -hmm. What did you think, John? No, I think again, it has merits of a, a great movie in my opinion. But there are I could see where people are coming from that. Didn't either disliked it or just thought it was fine, but personally, like I was really emotionally compelled by it. I it resonated with me. I loved all the characters, minus maybe a couple of things with Nebula and Gamora, and a couple of things with Ego. But I think overall, the direction that it went in was a really risky direction, and it paid off for me in the most part. And it's a really fun movie. It's a fun time at the movie, so you could bring like your girlfriend, your friends, your parents. You're all gonna have a great time with it. It takes risks. It's one of the weirder Marvel movies out there, which really, really quick, the acid trip sequence when they're, oh, when yeah. they're tripping through like quadrants. I'm like, that's that's like something out of like a Rick and Morty. Or, like, I don't know what that, that was. was. straight out of 21 Jump that, Street. That that's was like what a, I thought. That wasn't a Marvel Studios scene. That was like something ridiculous. <laughs> that, was, but, that, was a, that was really weird too, but I, I bought into that. I don't know. I was yeah. just like, oh, I'm okay with this. Oh, in the context of the, of the universe, yeah. Mm. But I just thought it was, it was really <laughs> out there for like a Marvel movie. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. You should totally... Even if you don't love the movie, you're going to have a good time with it. There's good qualities about it. And I gave, I gave it a 4 out of 5. So I guess that would translate to like an 8 out of mm -hmm. 10 too also. Cool. If I had to give it that. Nice. And I guess that's it for mm -hmm. this Guardians kind of podcast. Yeah, we went Spoiler. off on a lot of tangents. And we're we got, 40 minutes in. Yeah, And we should have 
we got to learn the definition of a segue clearly, but mm-hmm. you know we'll work on that. We'll yeah, work on that. I, I looked to Eric Striffler <laughs> for segues. He, he's my inspiration. Pretty much it. He was like the segue king, and now like ever since I'm like I gotta get like that, and nowhere near that level yet. It's okay, we'll but, get there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I guess if you watch this video, if it's technically you're listening, but if mm-hmm. you watch this on YouTube, thanks for watching. Mm-hmm. Um, Anything you have to say really quick, John, before we yeah. clock out? All right. Well, you guys can find me on my YouTube channel, Some Real Good Movies. You know, real like film reel. You see what I did there? I was very creative. Uh, so some some real good movies or on Facebook at John Ryan Anderson or on Twitter uh, at SRMG channel or on Instagram at Some Real Good Movies. Yeah, definitely check him out. He has a bunch of reviews coming out this May. I think next yeah. is Alien Covenant, right? Is that the, is that the right? Answer? I think so. Yeah, I might see King Arthur. I'm still debating on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's another debate. I don't know. Guy, it could be good, guys. It could be, it could be good. It could be good. Never, never doubt, it, never doubt a movie. I don't know. Even, even never. I just said never doubt a movie. <laughs> never doubt a Tony Wiseau movie. Uh, I really, I don't know. I didn't like Sherlock Holmes at all. It was not, there was nothing wrong with Sherlock Holmes, but I was like, this, I, I could have not watched that. And I feel like that's how I'm going to feel about King Arthur. But <laughs> stay tuned for that if I wind up going. I don't know. Yeah, things are going to happen in that movie. And that's a very broad statement also. Yes. But uh, Charlie speaking, of, in it. speaking of broad statements, no, naturally. See, again, I don't, there's nothing to do with my channel. <laughs> We're trying but, so hard, um, guys. And if you're still here, we applaud you. Thank and we you. appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, I'm John Maffio, your host. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and pretty much anywhere else at Mothman Jones. And also, really quick, I started the Star Wars channel. Check it out. It's called Live Brief Star Wars. Every Monday, I'm going to be talking about Star Wars stuff. Uh, subscribe, please. Or not. You don't have to. And that's, <laughs> that's it. Um, this has been the Guardians pod, cla- pod clash slash pod podcast clash. slash video slash errors. Slash is a it, bunch is like of when, random segues and other things. But, you know, I just had a random thought. What if, like, I just connected a podcast to a typewriter? Like, if you have errors when you talk and you just kind of, like, it's like when you're on a typewriter and you just kind of, oh, sh- typed in the A. I meant to put a B there. Shit. <laughs> you see, I don't, nothing makes sense. <laughs> this, this, con- I think I have a brain fart today. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> this has been a really fun podcast, guys. Uh, I think the title subscribe. will be Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Subscribe, yes. like, and watch this again if you are daring yeah. enough. Because it's, like, it's just like Guardians 2. It'll get better the second time you listen oh, to it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We, we age like fine wine here. <laughs> and we'll, I guess we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. No segues. <laughs>